Hey, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, and you're building a system around business processes and workflows. Great, but where does the code go that has to orchestrate all this? Now, this is a really common question, which I also got from a member of my channel on our private Discord. Any opinions? Of course I do. Around process managers and bounded contacts, do people build process managers that cross bounded contacts? I'll get some guidelines on this, as well as have other clever ways to co-locate the workflow step. Where does such code live? Well, there's a way of thinking about this. The first thing to realize is oftentimes you have smaller workflows that chain together, make bigger workflows. I'm going to show this exact example in code so you can see where the code for the workflow actually lives. But here's kind of the flow. So we have three different boundaries, sales, shipping, and billing. Sales is going to publish an order placed event when the order is actually placed. And billing is going to be publishing an order build event when the customer's charged, however they're invoiced. Shipping now is responsible for obviously shipping the order, but it cannot do so until both of those order placed and ordered build events happen. And the reason is, it's because in messaging asynchronously, they may come in out of order. I don't know what order they're gonna come in, but I need to know that they're both gonna happen before I can actually have shipping ship our order. And that's what I mean by smaller workflows are part of bigger workflows. Our bigger workflow is the entire thing that I just illustrated, but there was a smaller workflow in there, which was just a part of shipping. I'm gonna jump into our code example next, but before I do that, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So here's that exact example in code using C-sharp.net with end service bus. Now, if you're not in the .NET space, don't worry, you'll grok this. It's not so much about what the code looks like, more about some of the general ideas behind it and kind of some of the guidelines. So let's run over some of this code. So the first thing to look at is in our sales boundary, we have this place order handler. And when we are placing our order from our client, which I'll show in a second, we aren't doing anything meaningful of this example. All we're really doing is kind of what I was illustrating is we're gonna publish an order placed event. Then the second thing that happened, if you remember, is that on the billing side, we did the exact same thing, is that we then had to publish our order build event. So what it's doing is that once the order's been placed, it's handling that message, that event specifically, then it's, again, not doing anything meaningful for our example other than publishing an order build event. So those are the two events that we are publishing, an order place and an order build. Now the workflow that we actually wanna capture is in shipping. We wanna know that both of those events have occurred so that we can actually ship our order. So now in the shipping boundary, that particular project, I have a shipping policy. And it's a very interesting way to think about it because that's what really what we're doing is we have a policy saying, okay, if the order's placed in the build, that's when we can actually ship our order. And I'm using the terminology here of like those two events occurred, then I can perform some type of command. So we have this shipping policy and that's what I'm handling. I'm saying that it doesn't matter which one comes in first. I'm just gonna handle both of them. And I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty event service bus here, but it's capturing the state that we can record when each of those events happen. So when an order placed event occurs, we're gonna handle that. And we're just gonna, in our state say, okay, that we're gonna capture that the order has been placed true. Same thing when the orders build, we're gonna capture that the order's been built at this point. And in both circumstances, what we're gonna to try to call is this place order. And this is actually kind of the, the real life of the policy is saying, okay, if the order is placed and if the order's built, then we can say that we wanna send the command to ship our order, which then the, that process will happen separately, kind of creating um, our shipping label, et cetera. And then we're saying this policy, this saga is complete. So to jump over to this diagram, what we're saying is order placed, event occurs, orders build, event occurs, we consume those, both of those, then we process a command locally within that boundary. So to answer the question, where does code live that needs to deal with that workflow? Well, it exists within the boundary that actually needs to do something. How you treat events and commands really kind of distinguishes this which we can also answer now, how do we communicate between boundaries? And this is kind of the guideline. Generally, when you're communicating between boundaries, you're using an event. Just like my example, when order was placed, that was consumed by billing and shipping. When the order was billed, that event was consumed by shipping. We weren't telling shipping to do something from either boundary. We were just publishing an event and letting the workflow be there. Now within a boundary, in the case of our shipping, once we consumed both within our policy, our saga, from there we were publishing the command to ship the order. So generally, when you're communicating cross boundaries, you're using events. 
when you're costing, when you're communicating within your boundary, you can be using commands or events. Now this is just a general guideline, not a rule. There's no rule that says you can't send a command from one boundary to another. For example, billing could send a command to shipping to ship the order rather than using the event. But you need to understand what the implications there are. If you're sending a command, you have a higher degree of coupling, even though you might be using, say, messaging and you're removing that temporal aspect, but or you're making an RPC call and you have that temporal aspect, you're specifically telling it to do something. So you are coupled in a different way than you are with events. With events, as the publisher, you have no idea who the consumers are. It doesn't even know when it's publishing an event that it's really a part of an overall bigger workflow. And surprise, surprise, I finally mentioned coupling. I knew you were waiting for it, but that's really what it's about. But that's not to say that if you're using events, you're not coupled. You still are, just in a different way, to a lesser degree. You're still coupled to the schema of what that event is, and you're still coupled to the location, let's say the topic of where the broker is, of where that event is being published. So when you're thinking about commands and events, they really are kind of a good guideline or a way to think about, okay, where does this workflow live in that code? If you're using the general guideline of not crossing a boundary for a command, then that's a good way. So we can think about commands. You're trying to invoke something. You're coupling at a different level because you're saying, I want you to do something. You know that other thing, the receiver of it has to do it. So your purpose there is invoke behavior. In terms of commands, the whoever is consuming it, there's only one consumer, that's the boundary that actually owns that command. And it should be itself consuming it. So again, if you're kind of in that mode of within your boundary, you're using a command, then the consumer is the owner. For events, you're just defining something happened. You're publishing it. You have no idea whether anybody even cares or about that event or is even doing anything meaningful with it. The owner of that event is who's publishing it. You're not publishing an event from all different boundaries. It's something that represents something that happens in a specific boundary. And you could have any number of consumers, including yourself. The publisher could be the consumer. You could have no consumers for an event. So it's really about interesting how you distinguish co commands and events can really define about what that workflow is and where it lives. So back to the code example, I'm running it. I set a bunch of breakpoints. You can see the flow here. So now if I just press P, I'll simulate placing an order. And the first thing that happens is our place order handler is happening and we're gonna be publishing that event. The next thing we actually pick up on is now we're in our shipping policy. So that's again, that's living within the shipping boundary and we're handling our order placed. We can see that we're setting our state and then we're gonna call process order. But like I mentioned, order hasn't been billed, so we're just gonna continue on. From there, if I look over at billing, I'm actually breaking here as well because now we're also handling our order place event and we're gonna be publishing the order build event. So back to our shipping policy within shipping that's handling that. We can see that now we're setting our orders build to true. And when we go to process order, yes, both are now true. So we can then send our ship order command to within our own boundary. We're publishing it to a command to our own boundary. And then now I'm in my ship order handler and we can ship our order. So that was the full flow in code of using events to communicate cross boundary and then using command within boundary. So you may be thinking to yourself, this is crazy. I don't need that complexity. I just make an RPC call or I'm in a monolith and it's just a function call. Fair enough, in your system, in your context, that may be the case. In larger systems where you're trying to manage coupling, that's the biggest part of this, between different boundaries, this is a way to manage it and a way manage those workflows. My example here is in, by design, simple to illustrate the flow. You wouldn't have a giant example of all kinds of domain complexity that you'd have to get through to figure out what's actually happening. These, sim these examples are simple to illustrate something, but you gotta fit it within your context of what it actually fits for how you wanna manage coupling and depending on the size of your system. Now get in the comments and let me know what you're doing. Are you using events, asynchronous commands, RPC? What tools are you using? Let me know the good points and the pain points that you experience. Get in the comments. And if you wanna take it a step further and chat with other software developers about topics like this or questions that you have, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.